Oh, hi. You're, you're welcomed back to KJH and YouTube. I don't know what day it is. It's been a lot. There's a lot coming. The brand launch, we bought a house. Booking a trip to Canada for two weeks to go and watch the product we filled at the lab. My hair is giant because it's very hot in New York City, but I'm just going to rock it. Anywho, I'm going to do an eveningy glam, but all about liner. I've got on a little bit of blush and a little bit of concealer from a video that I just filmed, so I'm going to fix that later. So just... Don't judge me, okay? We've got a brown eyeliner. This is Sepia from Bobbi Brown and my KJH uh, Spectrum Collab number 22 brush. So I'm gonna twist the brush on the back of my hand to perfect the tip and make it pointy. And then I'm going to use my mirror behind my phone as a guide for where my eyeliner is gonna go. And I always start with the wing if I want the wing to be small. Um, versus if I start in the inner corner, my wing ends up being bigger sometimes. Um, so I'm starting with brown because I'm going to go over with black. So I'm using brown almost like it's... Remember in school when you had tracing paper to trace on before you would, like, use pen? Same, same method, truly. As far as doing the other side, just make sure that you are... I feel like my camera's weird. Make sure that you are kind of like looking at this side and spotting yourself in a sense. Just need a bit more down there where I've got a hooded eye. Okay, make sure that you're looking at this side to get your placement for the other side. Also, if your eyes are different, don't try and make them match. Do what works for the each eye and then they will likely match. This jawline I might be drying out a little bit. There's not really any way that I've found to reinvigorate a gel liner except for just pick up more from the jar. So that's that. That's that. So easy, simple. I'm not going to buff it. I'm going to keep it sharp because Hannah told me to. My assistant, she was like, you haven't done a clean wing liner for a while. I was like, all right, fine. Fine, Hannah. Okay, joking. I uh, sometimes just have to pluck up the courage to do a wing liner on camera because... You know, with Uncut by with KJH, the whole point of this series is that it's unedited. And the beauty of that is that you get to see how I would fix mistakes in real time. And sometimes you, you know, you have to have the patience for eyeliner. And so, you know, okay, end of my rant. So just putting on a little bit of black liner over the top. This is the Lancome Idole. Just right over the top, and I'm just sort of gonna smush it in and stamp it in over the brown. So the brown was my, you know, almost tracing step. And the black is my sort of permanent step. So this is definitely a little longer than this side, but that's okay. I'm gonna now make them match. So I'm just gonna press and tap. And actually a good way to make them match without making them two different sizes and bigger is go back to your brown because your brown is again, your sort of safety net. Your cream paint pot type is a safety net or your coal pencil is your safety net. A gel liner is not so much of a safety net, um, nor is a pen liner is not so much of a safety net. So now they're a little bit uneven. I'm gonna take my number nine brush from KGH Spectrum Collab. While that's still wet, just cut underneath. Do the same on the other side. You can use makeup remover to do this. However, you might find that there's enough oils and emollients on your skin already to just help you remove some of that. I'm gonna move on from the eyes because I don't wanna to focus too much on them and try and perfect them and then make them giant. I'm gonna go in with some concealer first. Um, I've got a little bit of freckles on from a freckle pen that I might end up using again. I'm just doing a little, little, little bit of concealer in areas that I like. Just swiping on a few swipes. And then I'm gonna take a number eight KJH Spectrum and buff that in to a blend. And I like a brush like this because it gives me small, it's small, so therefore it gives me maximum control of how far I blend that concealer. My camera's over here and I keep looking here because I normally have my phone the other way around. Um, a small brush gives me maximum control on the blend. Um, versus a big brush but sometimes a big brush is good because it gets you done quickly but if I want to be precise and I want my skin to sort of be very very meticulously painted I will use a small brush typically more than a big brush 
Um, a big brush I would use for something very, very sheer, or if I knew the shade match was like spot on, meaning like if it wasn't going to be too bright here versus too, you know, what I mean by what I just said is the hairline typically has a little bit more pigment in it from the sun, especially in summer, than the jawline or the cheeks. So obviously if I went in with this concealer, which is the shade number four in the product that's coming soon from the brand that's got purple in their packaging. If I went in with that right at my forehead, quite bright with a big, big brush, it's going to spread it bigger and wider as I want to be quite precise about how far it blends because it's a brighter color for me. Just like 201 is from, um, what do you call it? Shiseido. 201 from Shiseido is a little on the bright side for me, but I love it. So I'm probably going to go back in with more eyeliner in a minute, but I like the option to just think about it for a bit and then decide if I want to come back around. And this is kind of like a makeup look that I would wear for like a night out. If I was going out with my friends um, or if I was going on a date night with Tarek, um, just something kind of pretty and sort of easy, but that felt striking at the same time. And doing a little bit of the number one pencil by Nabla, because I like a nude. But I'm gonna add more pink into that and I'm gonna get there right now with a little bit of this blush from Tower 28. It's a new shade, it's called Dream Hour. I think it was released just in time for the Barbie stuff. I'm just gonna use my big brush and just stipple it on. Just in the center of the lip. It's almost, it's like a hybrid pink lavender. It's like not pink, it's not lavender, it's somewhere in the middle. Looks fuchsia here, but on the skin, it almost reads a little lavendery, but in a pinky way, I guess. As far as placement of my blush, I'm just gonna go on the apples and the cheeks for a bit of a fresh, youthful kind of glow. Maybe a little on the bridge of the nose, doesn't hurt. And then just very delicately tapping. I'm always very delicately tapping the skin. I'm never really pushing or pulling or grabbing or sort of dragging product. Cause if you do, you sometimes might actually like pull it further out than what you, you might remove it as you're putting it on. Um, putting on a little freckle right there right where I've already got one. This freckle pen came in the mail this morning. It's from Bubel and Rudy. B Bubel and Rudy. It's called the Fre Berry Freckled Pen. I'm not sure if I'm saying the brand name correctly, but it's a beautiful, beautiful freckle pen and it's on underneath my complexion as well as now on top. And what that does to your complexion is it allows for your complexion to look really, really natural and not heavy at all. Um, I'm gonna do Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Had a long day yesterday. We bought a car yesterday. We struggled to park because parking in Brooklyn ain't, ain't so easy. And those that don't live in New York City are gonna probably wince at what I'm about to say, but to purchase a parking space for the month, what do you reckon, Hannah? 500 bucks. What would you say that's accurate? It's like $500 a month to have a dedicated parking space. Um, you may find some cheaper deals around. If anybody's got any leads, actually, that would be lovely. Otherwise, you're at the mercy of just looking for street parking, which is pretty hard because everybody's um, in the same boat. So we were driving around for about 45 minutes last night trying to park our new car. So we got into bed pretty late, and so I didn't wash my mascara off. So I'm literally going back over. I know some people are probably going to unfollow me for that, but I'm sorry. I, I'm human. Somebody once was so upset that I'd used a wet wipe, like a single use. I, I don't use single use stuff if I can help it. That wasn't why they were upset. They were upset about the fact that it was a wet wipe and it was apparently not good enough for skin. But it was like a beautiful one from like Dr. Lanson. and it had its own little individual packaging. I don't use wasteful things like that anymore. I barely use Q-tips and like that's fact. Um, it's like as a creative in this space, like the amount of waste and the amount of recycling I go through, I hate to add to that with cotton rounds. I use reusable cotton rounds in my personal, I use, Q-tips, probably, I use one Q-tip a week on myself, if that, and on my clients, I use brushes to clean up. Anyway, whatever. Um, the, um, what was I just saying? Why did I go on a run? They were upset at you for- They were upset at me for using a wet wipe. But why did I even get there? I don't even remember. Your whatever. Mascara. Oh yes, my I'll mascara. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we're, we're here. I'm gonna add a bit of bronzer. <laughs> We've got a busy day today because in about three days, I'm gonna go to Jersey for the weekend with our friends and maybe have a little pool party. We will see if the weather is in our favor. I'm using a little bit of the Nabla bronzer in the shade Soft Revenge. 
and the KJH number four brush. So we're gonna go to Jersey this weekend, spend it with our friends and swim, use the pool. And then the following Tuesday, we're going to Canada for about two weeks. So I'm trying to bank a bunch of YouTube content that can just be in the system, ready to press go on for, to make it live. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a fra I'm a frazzled scrambler today. And Hannah and I, my assistant Hannah and I decided this morning that we were gonna do four regular sort of programmed features per month. One is gonna be KJH brand related, whether it be like a behind the scenes, whether it be just like status, whether it be a tutorial. One is gonna be a vlog per month. One is gonna be like a creative makeup look per month. And the other one was what? Um, favorites. And then monthly favorites. Um, and then maybe we'll do one more, which will be like brand feature. A little bit of bronzer on the eyelids is always beautiful. It's like leaning into that latte makeup look. Um, but you see how it just sort of makes the eyebrows not feel so... I actually like what it did to my eyebrows. It made them a little softer. And now that the makeup is done, mostly, I don't actually feel like I need to go too much harder with the eyeliner. I am just going to like, if ever your eyeliner gets a little dry, just press it and get some of the flow going again. And another little trick is to use... Fix Plus on the back of your hand and that will wet the tip. And don't, you know, don't, don't, just don't let your eyeliner smell the fear because it's real. The eyeliner can smell fear. Okay, so this is me. I'm going to do a bit of powder. Shout out Tilbury. Do you guys like these videos? Do you think they should be different anyhow? Do you think they're good? Okay, a little bit of powder in the T-zone. This is a brush that's not out yet, so this might come, it might not come. My skin looks really good, I love this concealer. Oh my God. I am just gonna do one more little thing. I'm gonna take a little of this onto this brush. It's quite a light pink. I wouldn't do this on somebody much deeper than like a medium skin tone. I think it would be, I would, but I would mix it with things or I would use it um, very, very, very sheer because as you can see, it's got like a lot of white in the base. I was actually doing quotes yesterday for ed an editorial for Fashionista and I was talking about um, how to pick how to, how to pick shades for deeper complexions. I think it's always good to go for like beautiful, rich tones, browns, berries, reds, oranges, plums, the deeper the complexion. But that said, those colors also work on fair skin. So don't ever underestimate the power of deeper, more richer shades in your kit if you're a makeup artist, because they will go way further for you than a light beige. Like a light beige you can use on three people probably. Whereas like a deep beige, you can bring it down with a little bit of concealer if you need to. Um, yeah, anyway, different video for a different day. But maybe if you are interested in what I just said, you can ask me and I can maybe divulge deeper. Um, oh! Anyway, bye. See ya. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe. Ask any questions in the comments below.